We are now going to look at a couple of uh, example problems just to help you get a feel for a uh, good strategy for solving problems in kinematics. They're all fairly similar and once you get the hang of it it's kind of a pretty similar process to follow every time. Uh, first thing you'll want to have is your kinematic equations nearby so you can refer to them. Uh, after you use them a while you'll probably just remember most of them but it's always good to have them nearby to make sure you don't forget a squared or a factor of a half or what have you. Alright, first problem. Allie is driving along at 20 meters per second, notices a cat 30 meters ahead, hits the brakes. Uh, tells us that we have a uniform acceleration, stops in 2.4 seconds, and we want to know is the cat alive or dead? Uh, before I jump into how I would solve this problem, I do want to uh, point out that our velocities are going to be in meters per second and not that it matters too much for your ability to solve the problem but it, it's just kind of fun to get a feel for what these units mean. Most of us have an idea of what 10 miles per hour means versus 60 miles per hour but we might not know what 20 meters per second is um, as well as 30 meters ahead on the road. Well for those of you that watch football you're going to be familiar with yards and meters are pretty dang close to a yard so you might have a feel for that so if you think about an object that moves 20 meters in a single second that would be moving pretty quick if you were a football player so this is faster than a person could run uh, but if you think about like an airplane flying that's going to move a lot more than 20 meters per second so uh, you want to think about those things and just kind of get a feel for how, um, how fast a given quantity in meters per second is. Turns out that uh, one meter per second is pretty close. We'll do approximately equal to 2.24 miles per hour. So basically you can double this and then add pretty close to another quarter of it. So you double that, you're at 40, take a quarter of the original number which is another 5. So this is pretty close to 45 miles per hour. Just to give a feel for that. I'm going to get this out of the way here. Alright, so back to our problem here. Want to know is the cat alive or dead? So first thing I would do is I would organize my information and I would make a list of all of the quantities that we know and what we're trying to find and what we don't know. So basically every time you can start out just by listing out these pertinent variables. These are the same quantities that are important for every kinematic problem. So you can just make this list every single time. Start out with that and then fill in what you know. So we have that she's driving along at 20 meters per second. Now that's a velocity and we have a choice. Is that her velocity at the beginning of this problem or at the end of the problem? Well, um, sometimes that can be a little tricky if you have you know, multi parts to the problem. There could be the end of one part is the beginning of another. But in this case we're concerned about when she hits the brakes to when she stops. So 20 is what she was traveling when she hits the brakes. So that's her initial velocity. And the number for the final velocity is not explicitly given, but uh, it says that the brakes stop the car. Being stopped is a velocity of zero. You can go ahead and put meters per second on these values, or units, if you like. I'm not going to ever grade you on that, but um, kind of according to taste. Alright, we have that the cat is 30 meters ahead in the road. Now we might be tempted to put 30 meters here for our displacement, but that would be a bad idea. This is how far the cat is. All the other information applies to what the car is doing. We don't know if the car makes it to 30 meters or not, okay? So we don't want to put that 30 meters there. Um, we do know the acceleration of the car here is given. Oh, I'm sorry. No, not the acceleration. That's the time, right? It's just saying that it's uniform acceleration. Alright, so... Duh, 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 the brake stop. It doesn't even say time. Alright, 2.4 seconds. That is our time. Okay. We don't know the acceleration, and for part A, we don't care about the acceleration other than the fact that it's uniform. That's just saying, hey, you're allowed to use these equations because these are the equations for uniform acceleration. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase uh, this 30 meters per second here. So 
The other thing we want to fill out is what are we trying to find? Well, if I want to know whether I hit the cat, I want to know the displacement for the car. So that's actually our unknown. That's what I'm trying to find. So I'm going to put a question mark there because that tells me this thing that's left blank here, I don't know anything about it and I don't care about it. So if you remember this chart over here uh, has a column for the thing we don't care about, the, the variable not used is the thing we don't care about. So the one for acceleration uh, is this equation here. So we want to use delta x equals v plus v naught over 2 times t. So now I just need to plug things in and solve. I'm solving for delta x, so uh, final velocity is 0, initial velocity is 20 over 2 times my time of 2.4 seconds. This guy is going to be 10 times 2.4 so I get 24, oops, not 2.4, I get 24 meters is the distance for when the car stopped. So I compare that to 30 and the cat is indeed alive. We stopped 6 meters short of uh, where the cat was. So that was part A. Part B says, what is the acceleration experienced by Allie? Now, once I know this quantity here, my delta x, I can go ahead and add that to my list of information here. And now you'll see I'm trying to find acceleration. There isn't one of these that is left blank. So that means I have my choice of equations. Any equation that has acceleration in it, so everything but the one I already used, I can choose any of them. So I would probably just grab the one that is the easiest. So V equals V naught plus AT. Another thing you might want to consider is to use, you might still want to use the equation um, where you only have to use given values instead of calculated values. So you might want to use this equation because you don't use delta X. Just in case you messed up on part A, uh, that error isn't going to carry over to bite you again. All right, so we are going to use V equals V naught plus AT for part B. V equals V naught plus AT. Nice, simple calculation. Final velocity is zero. Initial velocity is 20. Acceleration is what we're solving for. And the time is 2.4. So we're going to get acceleration equals negative 20, because we subtract it to the other side divided by 2.4. Uh, you throw that in your calculator, you get 8.3 repeating. It's actually negative, so I'm just going to round that and say approximately 8.3 meters per second squared. Now, I tend to not write the units throughout the uh, intermediate calculations. I do want units on your final answers. You'll get dinged on tests and quizzes if you do not have units because uh, a distance measured in meters is much different than a distance measured in light years or something like that. Uh, if you want to write units all along the calculation, it is a good check that you did things that you did things correctly. So here, this 20 was 20 meters per second divided by 2.4 seconds. So you can see that those seconds combine and everything works out nicely. Also, what about this negative sign here? Do, do we expect a negative sign? Is that good or bad? Um, a lot of times if I just ask what is the acceleration, I don't care whether it's positive or negative um, because I didn't define this explicitly as the positive direction here. But when I wrote it on my list of information, then I implicitly decided that the direction the car was going was positive. And if I'm stopping, the acceleration has to be in the other direction. So yes, we would expect a negative sign to be here. All right, let's do one more example. Marty needs to get the DeLorean up to 88 miles per hour. Uh, going the other way, dividing by 2.24 gives you pretty close to 40 meters per second. In order to make it back to 1985, for those of you who don't know, this is a movie reference here. Good old classic movie. You should go watch it if you've never seen it. Back to the Future. Lightning is going to strike the clock tower and go down the wires uh, at 10.04 and the DeLorean has an acceleration of 2.6 meters per second. So we need to figure out when Marty needs to hit the gas. 
All right, so just like before, I want to start out with my list of stuff that I could possibly know or not know or be wanting to find. So here we go. Uh, he needs to get up to 40 meters per second. That's not what he's going to start at. That's what he needs to end up at. Okay. It, sometimes it's not too explicit, but we assume he's starting at rest. So we're going to put zero here for his initial velocity. We're given an acceleration of 2.6 meters per second. And we want to know at what time does Marty need to hit the gas. So <clears throat> we're, we're just going to figure out how many seconds it's going to take to get up to speed. Then we can subtract that from 10.04, right, to figure out the time. So this is what we want to find, it's time. Delta x for part A we don't care about. So once again, if we look at our equations, that thing we don't care about is a hint of the easiest equation to use. So v equals v naught plus a t, once again, um, there's a list part A here. So v equals v naught plus a t. I've got my final velocity. I've got my initial velocity is zero. I've got my acceleration and I've got my time so doing a little algebra we're gonna have 40 over 2.6 which is going to be approximately equal to 15.4 seconds alright so technically the question asked what time so 15.4 seconds before 10.04 well that's gonna be 10.03 and 44 Point six seconds. So there is. I'm not sure if that's the right way to write time. Ooh, kind of did a bad box there. Let's try one more time. Okay. Anyway, the point is 15.4 seconds ahead of uh, when the clock struck. Now you can add this to your list here, but you do need to be careful about rounding errors. Uh, in this example we got 24 and that answer was actually exact so we didn't have to worry about um, whether we carried over some rounding or not here I don't want to just put 15.4 here if I'm going to end up using that number I would want to write it out with as many digits as I can so 15.3846 are the first four decimal places you're probably safe if you keep three or four decimal places or what I would do is I would just grab the number stored in my calculator uh, with all the digits that the calculator can possibly store if you're going to use that again. For, so for part B we want to know how far back from the power line does he need to place his car. So again for those of you who haven't seen the movie uh, this rod right here hits this power line so basically we're saying how far back does he need to start assuming he's going to uh, be right at 40 meters per second, 88 miles an hour, right when the lightning strikes and right when the car is lined up with the power line. So now we're going to find displacement. And similar to last time, since everything else is filled out, I can use any of these equations other than the first one because I can't solve for displacement if it's not in the equation. But I probably want to avoid these guys as well um, since I, then I don't have to worry about that rounding error for my time. Uh, if you keep all the digits in your calculator, you're probably safe. And if you're confident you didn't screw up part A, you're probably safe. But I'm going to grab this equation here. So we've got part B. Come on, pen. There we go. Part B, I've got V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. And now I can plug in the values. This is going to be 40 squared. Here we've got 0 squared, 2 times 2.6 times delta x. Now I just need to solve this guy for delta x. So this goes away, and I've got 40 squared equals <clears throat> 2 times 2.6 times delta x. So I divide these guys over there. I'm going to have 40 squared over. 2 times 2.6, plug that guy in your calculator, and you end up with oh, approximately equal to 
0.7 meters. So I rounded that. Uh, we're typically not going to worry too much about sig figs. Just rounding to one decimal place is usually going to be fine. So he's got to park quite a ways back, 300 meters. You know, that's over three football field lengths. Um, but there you have it. This is where Barney needs to park. That's when he needs to hit the gas. And voila, back home to mommy and daddy.